Good afternoon, everyone. We'll call to order this emergency meeting of the Board of County Commissioners. Thank you for being here. Uh, we'll get straight uh, right away. Mr. Administrator. Good afternoon, Commissioners. As you're aware, Hurricane, uh, well, Hurricane Eon, Tropical Storm Eon at this point, um, as has a glide path that per certainly puts Tampa Bay in its region. I would ask Kathy Perkins, our Director of Emergency Management, to come forward and give you a brief update and summary of actions to date and also uh, what the, uh, all the prediction models is showing. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Sorry to bring you in on a Saturday. Uh, we continue to monitor Tropical Storm Ian. This storm is currently south of Jamaica and will continue to move west before it turns to the north. The timing of this turn will impact the arrival times. So we continue to closely monitor this, being very mindful that timing can change from one advisory to the next. It is anticipated that this storm will continue to intensify to a major hurricane, a category three storm. The probability of us experiencing tropical storm winds here in the Tampa Bay area has continued to increase over the last few days to a 75% probability of tropical storm force winds and a 40% chance of strong tropical storm force winds. We are actively working with our partners to coordinate preparation actions. We're prepping sites to be used as shelters so we can turn them on as needed. We have notified our special needs applicants and our healthcare facilities to prepare. The County Information Center was open today to help take calls from the public and they've received over 400 calls today alone. We've had over 2,300 people sign up for Alert Pinellas since yesterday. So it's good to see that the public is taking this seriously and that they're paying attention. Public Works is actively checking our flood hotspots and pumping areas that have current high waters. This storm is predicted to bring eight to 12 inches of rain to our already saturated area. And with heavy saturation of the ground, we do anticipate we could see a lot of trees coming down with high wind, causing additional debris and a lot of power outages. We are actively communicating with the National Weather Service and the National Hurricane Center for updates to local impacts. We are actively working with the State Division of Emergency Management to pre-stage resources, bring in supportive personnel, and plan for if we need to have resources brought in from outside of the county, including airdrops. We do have concerns because we're attached to the mainland by three bridges. So if anything happens to them, we want to have that contingency plan in place. The state is very supportive of our actions. As you may have seen, the, the governor actually extended the executive order to all 67 counties in the state, showing the serious, seriousness and the magnitude of this particular storm. Commissioners, we are leaning forward and preparing for what could be severe impacts in our area. This local state of emergency will provide us with the necessary tools and the ability for the county administrator to help with make any evacuation decisions and public safety actions. So I thank you for your time today. Commissioners, what we're asking you today is for you to declare a local state of emergency. What that does is it authorizes the sheriff as a chief law enforcement officer and me as a county administrator take any and all necessary actions in case an evacuation is needed, which we will hold off and continue to communicate with you throughout uh, until we absolutely need to in preparation to keep people safe. Um, it also authorizes debris uh, actions and clearing um, roads and other areas to where if, uh, emergency, if emergency situations arise, we can do the, take the necessary steps to clear debris. So that authorization gives us the ability to act quickly. Um, it is for a period of seven days, at which time a, an additional action would be taken. Um, so at this time, that's what we've asked for you to uh, consider at this meeting. Um, and again, we'll continue to monitor Kathy and her team and all of our partners throughout Pinellas County have been over the last 24 hours doing all this prep work in anticipation and plan for the worst, hope for the best. But as you know, uh, once we see that uh, what the path is, time is of the essence. And so again, I'd ask you for your consideration. We have a motion from Commissioner Flowers, second from Commissioner Peters. Is that correct? No. Reverse, reverse that. On the resolution before you, are there questions on the resolution? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, show it passes unanimously. 
Any any other questions? Or any other questions about the process? Commissioner Eggers. Yeah, maybe you could talk just a little. We have a lot of new people in the area, but also a lot of us have been here for a while. Talk about the mandatory evacuation, what that means, when it can be called on, and how that translates to the people that are staying or living in their homes. So we know where all of the mobile homes, low-lying areas are, uh, barrier islands. Um, and so obviously we have contingency plans in place dependent upon the category of the hurricane. Um, and so but dependent upon the size and severity of the storm, then we would call for evacuations based upon that. Uh, the key is obviously to take it seriously. Um, Sheriff, you know, has, has been through this many, many times and, um, and all of you. And so the, what we're asking people is to watch and the news, stay alert, and to be able to take the actions necessary and be prepared um, because it could pass, it could divert, um, but it could also come directly at us. And so we need to uh, take the actions necessary to be ready. Further questions? Commissioner Peters. Um, just for clarification for people that are watching, um, we made this motion today, but that doesn't mean that we're asking people to leave yet. We are asking them to get prepared. We are not closing schools yet. So if you just kind of want to walk through so people understand what does this mean today uh, and, and you know what maybe will happen in the next day or two. That's a great clarification. The the action today simply delegates authority to where if we need to call for an evacuation, if we need to close schools, if we need to open community centers, or whatever the level of the appropriate response is for the storm, then we're able to do that. At this time, we are not asking people to evacuate. We are not um, and, and acting to close schools. We are in coordination with the school board um, to where we're already, in fact, we're already setting up, for instance, special needs shelters because of the prep time needed for oxygen and all the things necessary. And so those are currently being prepped right now in coordination with the school board. And, and, and if then we need to act, we're ready to be able to do that. We're pre-staging um, food and water at those locations currently right now. Um, and so again, we'll uh, stay tuned and stay aware and stay alert. Um, but no, no action at this time is necessary. Commissioner Gerard. I just want to ask, we uh, talked earlier on the phone about um, how long it would take actually to evacuate if we really thought something was going to hit and why people need to be so um, alert at this point because especially people that live on the beach and in low-lying areas, mobile homes, it's going to take... 48 hours? Depending, but go ahead, yeah, Kathy. Thank you, if Commissioner. We, if we're looking at a direct hit, right? Yeah, so for a Category 3 evacuation, the clearance time is 26 hours. If it's a Category 4, it's 42 hours. Mm -hmm. If it's a Category 5, it's 50 hours. But it's not just the individual residents that are evacuating right. as well. Right. Uh, we have over 250 mobile home parks in our community with over 44,000 residents. We need them to heed the warning. We have over 250 healthcare facilities. So if we had to evacuate hospitals, nursing homes, and assisted living facilities for a category three, that's 51. For a category four, that's 125. For a category five, that's 153 facilities that have to move. There are a lot of things that need to occur. And this is why it's really important for every single person out there right now to know your risk and make a plan. Look up and see what your evacuation zone is. We made changes to the evacuation zones this year. You can look it up on our website to know your zone. You can download the Ready Pinellas app. It will give you right there on your phone what zone you're in. And if, you know, currently we are in the five-day cone. It's really important that people pay attention, that they get their kits together at this time and know where they would go if they were going to evacuate. It does take time. And this is why we're leaning forward. We want to have everything in place if we need to pull that trigger. And we appreciate your support on that. Thank you. Further questions? Commissioner Eggers. Uh, yeah, so if, you know, again, you get to that point in time, you talk about making a plan and being ready. When do we, uh, w where do people know what shelter they should proceed to, number one? And two, uh, pets come into play, too. So where, are, where would those pet shelters be? And is that still to be determined 
And then when, where can we find that information? So we have identified there'll be three special needs shelters. There's three shelters that accommodate pet friendly. And then we'll have, I believe, 19 additional uh, shelters available for the general population. And that's if we're going for the full five. We're making sure that we've got 25 shelters prepped so we can accommodate uh, whether we're doing a category three, four, five, or even a less storm. So we're making sure that we've got those shelters in place. Once we know for sure which, when we're gonna call the evacuation, we will make those lists available. We don't want people showing up at shelters um, that might not open. So we will make sure that as soon as we make that decision, we will start getting that information out to the public. So pretty, it's pretty obvious which shelter each person would kind of be directed to. I mean, or, you know, that kind of thing. How, 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 how do we determine that? So for the people that are in the special needs no, shelters? No, just in general. In general? Yeah. It's Us. Say you wanted to, any of the folks out there wanted to go to a shelter. How do they? How are they directed, or which shelter do they choose to go? Well, they can ch they can choose to any go which on any one they okay. want. Yeah, I mean, if there's one closest proximity to their home, or if there's another area of the county they wish to go to, they can go to any of them. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Flowers. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, two things. The first is um, I know why we are not solely responsible for the construction that's occurring. We do have a lot of construction that's going on with some extremely large cranes. So do we have a way that we communicate with them so that they can start securing, because it takes a while, um, even if you want to take those extreme large cranes apart um, so that they're not a part of the debris, even if the cone doesn't hit us directly, um, extreme winds from any direction could certainly cause um, a lot of damage. So do we have that communication piece? And the second is, can you also talk about what we don't provide at shelters? Because some people need to know that, you know, if they want to bring a blanket or something to lay on or, you know, toys for children or whatever, um, that they know that they need to bring those things that we don't do the cots and things like that anymore. Thank you, Commissioner. So for construction sites, it's part of their policy. They need to start securing those. We'll make sure we're having a city manager call tomorrow. We make sure that we'll convey that information to make sure that they're getting that out to the construction sites and, and make sure they're talking to the, the people on the ground there. Um, your, and the other thing that we do is we work with FDOT and Public Works. So for any road construction, we want to make sure that any barricades that are out there are moved as far as possible so we can open up the evacuation roads as much as possible. We're working with FDOT to ensure that the barges off of the Howard Franklin are going to be secured. Uh, we don't want them coming loose during a storm. Um, so those are all preparatory actions that we're taking. In terms of the things that people uh, should be prepared for at a shelter, so we will provide a minimum. I like to tell people that um, shelters are a lifeboat, not a cruise ship. Um, you know, for the special needs folks, we'll have um, some minimal Department of Health staff there to help them, but we would ask that they come in with a caretaker, any medicines they need, uh, any special equipment that they have into those special needs shelters. For general population, you know, we want people to come in, bring in a sleeping bag, a pillow. Um, you know, if you have special dietary needs, you know, bring those snacks in. If you got young children, make sure you're bringing something in to keep them occupied, uh, have a change of clothes. Uh, you know, we will have food at the schools um, and water at the schools, but, you know, like I said, it's not going to be extremely comfortable. If we do have to go to a Category 5, we have to reduce our square footage. So, you know, if people can can stay with family or friends or if they want to leave the county we want them to plan for that now and if you do plan on leaving the county we want you to do that early so you know and monitor the traffic because as this storm comes up the west coast of Florida there can be many other counties that are evacuating in front of us so what is normally a hour hour and a half ride to Orlando could become a 10 hour ride so we want people to be prepared for that you know we encourage people to evacuate tens of miles, not hundreds of miles. Um, but if you do plan on going far, you want to do that early. Commissioner Peters. Thank you. And I know that um, our marketing department is, is posting information, um, but I spent the afternoon at the extension today, and I had numerous people knocking on the door looking for sandbags. So if you wouldn't mind listing the, where people can go to get sandbags, um, luckily, I was on the call, so I had the list um, from Jill. So um, that would be helpful, too, just for people's information. Right. So um, tomorrow and tomorrow's Sunday. Sunday and Monday, it'll be Walsingham, Lealman, and 
I'm forgetting the other name of the John Chestnut John Chestnut Park from nine to two for unincorporated. And then I know some of the other municipalities are going to be opening them. I don't have that exact list yet. We'll make sure that that gets on our website, and people can also call into our county information center to get that information. Well, many of the municipalities have announced already. Um, there's a PIO, so public information officers call today, later today, and that's where they're going to coordinate all that, and then we'll upload all that information to even the municipal sites to our website. Anything else? All right, folks, if you're listening out there, we all know it's a stressful time. Take a deep breath. The information that you'll be getting is the best we have at, at the time that we have. Uh, make the decisions that are right for you and your family. Uh, lean into kindness to your neighbor. If you know a, a senior who is living alone near you, please check on them. Uh, let's all do the right thing for each other. In a few days, we're going to hopefully look at this as just a chance to get together on a Saturday afternoon, but um, be safe. Thank you very much. We are adjourned. Thank you.